This is question 24 from the 2008 calculator paper. Here we are given a triangle and we're asked to find the size of the angle BAC, so the angle that's marked at the top. Now when we get to the end of a GCSE paper, particularly the calculator paper, we are going to be looking at one of the three formulas that are in the front of the book relating to trigonometry if we are presented with a triangle. Um, <clears throat> particularly if it's a non-right angle triangle. So let's kind of figure out which of these rules we're going to be using to try and find the angle BAC. Well first up, we're asked to find an angle, so we know it's definitely not going to be the area of a triangle. Then the sine rule, well the sine rule looks for, in order to use the sine rule, we need to have an angle and a side. Here we've not got we haven't got any of the angles, we've only got sides, so we can't use the sine rule. So what we're left with is the cosine rule. Now I find it's helpful just to label up the triangle that you've got. So here's my angle A, and opposite my angle A I'm going to call this my length A. The angle B is opposite the side B, and the, side, uh, the angle C is opposite the side C. Now I'm looking to try to find an angle here. So <clears throat> this this rule here, as it is at the moment, this is telling me the length of a side. Now there's one or two ways you could go about doing this. You could start by rearranging the cosine rule without any values, or you could choose to input the values first, then rearrange it after. I'm going to put the values in first and then rearrange it after. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. So what I can say is that the square of the side, the square of a side that is opposite an angle, is equal to the two angles, the two, sorry, the two sides that trap the angle squared minus two times the two angles that are trapping the angle multiplied by the cos of the angle. So let's input that. We need, we're focusing on this angle here, so we're going to use this side here as our a squared. So we get 15 squared equal to 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times uh, 10 times 12 and that is multiplied by the cos of A. So cos of the angle that we're missing. We're missing this angle, we haven't got that yet. Now from here I'm simply going to start evaluating some of this and then rearrange it. So 215 squared, that's going to give me 225. 10 squared, 100. 12 squared, 144 and then 2 times 10 times 12 that's going to give me uh, so 2 times 10 20 times 12 240 cos of the angle so now let's start rearranging this I'm going to I want this to be positive really so I'm going to say that it's 240 cos A, so just getting the negative 240 cos A over to this side, 240 cos of the angle that we're looking for is equal to um, 244, so just simplifying the 100 plus 144, minus 225, so then I can say that the cos of my angle is equal to 244 minus 225 which is going to give me 19 divided by 240 and then lastly I'm just going to say that A, my angle A is equal to the inverse of cos and then 19 divided by 240 so, <coughs> substituting this into my calculator, just simply plugging it in, what do I end up with? So, 
inverse of cos 19 divided by 240. That gives me an answer of A is equal to. Um, does it tell me what how uh, correct to one decimal place? So that's going to be 85.5. So my angle A is 85.5. As I said, you could have, if you wanted to, rearrange this rule first so that you'll just end up with A. Um, it's completely up to you how you go about doing it. I've chosen to substitute the values first, then rearrange. You could rearrange first, then substitute the values in. It makes no difference whatsoever. But you should have a final answer of 85.5.